Hello and welcome back to Mixed Mowers. In today's episode, we're going to be doing a full service on an HP 46R Mountfield lawnmower. This is a push mower with a roller on the back. I purchased this mower for £20 off of my local marketplace and the mower was all up and running as it should do, but however, it does require a service. The air filter is particularly dirty and I've been waiting for a part to come in. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty. Let's have a look at this lawnmower. Let's see if it still runs. And then let's get the oil change, the air filter change, the spark plug change. We've also the blade being sharpened and balanced. Let's give it a general tidy up and general check and see if we can get this mower pushed out for sale and sold on for a little bit of profit. <laughs> And here is a Mountfield HP 46R. It has a 46 centimeter cut on this lawnmower. It's a Mountfield fitted with a RSC 100 engine, overhead valve one. It's a push mower with a rear roller. So you, you have to push it along, but it still stripes your garden, just like everybody loves. It also comes with a good height adjustment on a single lever, which all works. It also comes with throttle control on the on the top of the lawnmower and a dead man's handle. It also comes with a grass collection box with a unique indicator to tell you when the grass box is actually full. When that flap folds down, that means your grass box is, is full up. So this lawnmower was running. It's not been running for, I would say, four weeks. I've not tried to fire it up. So what I want to do today is to fire the engine up, get it nice and warm. I should tie the dead man's handle back get it nice and warm so the oil is nice and nice and thin and then I can extract the oil out of the engine do a complete oil change and move on to the next parts of changing the filter and the spark plug so let's see if this little lawnmower will actually fire up okay so as I said I have not even tried to fire this engine the overhead valve cover is freezing cold so is the exhaust manifold so I've not, I've not tried to fire this engine at all the spark plug HT lead is on Let's just check the fuel first, that's the first thing I must do. Let's make sure it's got some fuel in it. Yeah, it's got a bit of fuel in there. Okay, let's try and fire it up. On to choke. Pull the dead man's handle in. Fantastic, so it fired up pretty much first pull. However, it didn't want to stay idling because the engine was cold. But after two or three seconds there, the engine did warm up slightly and I was able just to idle it. So what I'm gonna do off camera, I'm just gonna literally tie back the dead man's handle and let this engine warm up for about two or three minutes just so the oil is nice and thin. Okay, fantastic. That's now had time to warm up and the manifold yeah, is, is nice and warm. So that means the oil should be now be nice and thin. So now I'm just gonna remove the dipstick and the oil actually looks really good on there already. Yeah, the oil looks really, really clear. It's a bit low, but I'm gonna do an oil change regardless because I don't know how long that's been in there. So with my suction pump just going to insert that into the oil housing tube and start to pump and extract the oil out of the engine 
and away it goes. It always pays to run the engines up for five minutes, just so the oil is nice and thin to extract it out, especially on a cold January morning. If you leave it when it's cold, the oil's really thick. I'll just let that, let that suck out and then I'll come back. Okie dokie, so now we've got all drained out, just to prove there's no oil on it. This is a very smart bit of my dipstick, that's just where I pulled it out of the dipstick housing, but there's no oil in here at all, which is good. And now I'm going to pull it, fill up with, this is actually proper mount filled universal oil, but you can use any, any type of uh, SEA30 oil. Just grab a quick funnel. Always got one to hand. That can sit inside there, and then we're just going to fill up this this engine with oil, and just start introducing a small bit of oil in there. Have to go very slow because the housing is very very narrow. Let's put a bit of oil there. Let me get this filled up and I'll come back to you. Okay, so that's the oil change now done. And as you can see, it's up to the top filler mark and the oil is absolutely as clear as you like. So that's, that's fantastic. It's just over to full, but by the time we, we run the engine and the oil thickens up, that will drop ever so slightly. So, so I'm happy with that. So that's the oil change done. We're now going to move around to the other side and we're going to have a quick look at the air filter. So the air filter is located on this side of the engine. Just simply pull the tab back and take the housing off and then we can remove our air filter. And as you can see, this is a part I was waiting for. It's not a part I, that I stock, but as you can see, it's filthy, it's blown all types of residue on the inside so that's not good for anything at all so that can be discarded just give us a general clean get rid of any oil or petrol and dust or debris fantastic and then I've got a brand new genuine genuine part here incidentally the part number for this one is 11855074-8-0. So this will help the engine no end because it's better sucking the correct amount of air when it needs. And this air filter literally just pops straight back on to its housings sits in there and we then just replace the air filter cover like so so that's the air filter done let's now move around to the spark plug okay so now we ran the front of the engine just remove the HT lead off of the engine and we're going to be using this um, spark plug spanner Put that in and gently lock up the spark plug. To remove it. Bear in mind it's maybe a little bit warm because I have been firing the engine up, so just go careful. It's only just lukewarm, so that's not too bad. These are the extra long spark plugs in these. <coughs> These are the RC12YCs and it's not in too bad a condition. A little bit of carbon on there, but I've got a brand new spark plug in the shed. I'll go and get that and get that fitted as well. Okay, so I've got a brand new spark plug. So I'm just gonna fit that into the lawnmower now. And always be careful just to hand tighten these 
at first until you get the threads running. Once the threads are running, you can then back that up with your spark plug spanner. Doesn't have to be super duper tight, just once it's snug, just one quarter turn. And then reattach the H T L E to clicks. So we've now done the oil change, we've done the air filter, and we've now done the spark plug. Let's move on to changing the edge on the blade and give that a nice sharpen up. Right, we're now ready to move on to sharpen the blade. First things first is to remove the HTD once again. Because we're working underneath the engine and we're going to be rotating the blade, we do not want this engine to have any chance of firing up, so always remove the HTD. Now, <coughs> I have just filled this up with oil, so I don't want to have it up on its side for too long. Just enough, just to tip the lawnmower over, put the socket on. Turn the blade and then loosen the blade up. That wasn't on the very tight to be fair. And then just remove the blade. Once the blade's been removed, tip the lawnmower back on its front. Okay, is the blade now removed? We can now start to inspect the cutting edge. This is a cutting edge just here. It always lifts up at the back, which gives you a vacuum for your grass. So this is a factory edge. It doesn't look too bad. This one's tied up. When grinding these blades back, you always try and follow the factory, the factory angle. So I'll just get my hand grinder and just run my grinder across these just to put a new edge. And then I'll just dull it off on the back on either side. So I'll get that done now. Right, that's the blade all done. So literally all I've done is just follow the factory edge, factory edge on the blade on, the, on both fronts and then just dulled it over onto the back side. So the blade is not sh razor sharp, but it has a good edge. Uh, a lawnmower blade shouldn't be razor sharp. It should literally just be, it ni ni has a nice edge to it, but not too sharp because as soon as it strikes the grass, it will start to dull anyway, so. Whilst I have a lawnmower up on its side, I'll literally just give it a good tidy out from underneath as well, so that's nice and clean. It's the number one cause for rot. So I'm now going to attach the blade back on. And it's important just to make sure that the blade is sitting perpendicular with, with the blade boss itself. So let's just tighten that up. A couple of turns and I'll just put, put my foot up against the blade and then that's got to be on there super duper tight. Fantastic. Okay, so you may get a little bit of petrol spill, literally where you have the engine up on its side. So it's just important just to wipe any petrol or any oil residue off. The engine may smoke when you go to restart it because the engine has been tipped up. But what's important is to leave the engine now just for five minutes, just to allow all the oil to return back to its normal place, especially within the, valve, within the valves. We can now replace the HT lead back onto its spark plug. And whilst we're waiting for the oil to return, Now's a good time to give the lawnmower a wipe. Just want to double check there's no oil inside the new air filter we've put in. No, there's not. That's good. And that's why I tip that that way. If you tip it up the other way towards me, you'd be encouraging oil coming down into a carburetor. And that's something we don't want. Okay, so the pull coil is in fantastic condition. That doesn't need any work it doesn't need any work at all so i shan't be needing to replace that the cables are all good they all work the engine stops as it should do and the throttle works as it should do additionally there is also a hose hose tap connection here so what you can do 
is every single time after you finish cutting your grass, you can attach your hose. It's important to drop the lawnmower down to its lowest setting to cause a vacuum. Run your lawnmower and put your hose pipe on it. Give it two or three minutes with that and that should keep your, your bottom of your deck nice and clean. Okay, so now that's had a couple of minutes, let's fire this lawnmower back up because the full service has now been complete. We've done a new spark plug, a new air filter, an oil change, a blade sharpened and balanced, and a general tidy up elsewhere. There's nothing loose on, on this machine. It all works, the, the roller works, the height adjustment works as it should do. So let's fire this machine back up. Right, let's get this lawnmower started. Just make sure there's nothing underneath the lawnmower. Just that bit of grass, so that'd be fine. It's on a top height adjustment. If I put it on to choke, I'll pull the dead man's handle in. Fantastic, all up and running, exactly how it should. Okay, so how simple and how easy was that? And also, this lawnmower is now ready for another good year of grass cutting. As long as you keep on top of your maintenance, there's no reason why these sort of type of lawnmowers cannot last you a lot. Today you see me do an oil change, you see me do a spark plug change, and an air filter change. They're the three most key components the lawnmower needs to keep running. Also, we've done a clean underneath as well with a blade sharpen and balance. So this lawnmower now is up and running. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Mixed Mowers and I hope to see you again very, very soon. But before I go, I'd like to give a little shout out to my very, very dear friend up in the Midlands, little Louis Martland. He's got a channel called Louis MTV. Please go and check him out. He's a fantastic fella. See you again soon. Do you feel the